Good morning. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Warm welcome this morning as we gather. It's the first Sunday of the month, so uh, I do have a personal opinion about it. So anybody having a birthday in the month of April, uh, please wave your hand. Anybody? Well, everybody say happy birthday, Maggie. Happy birthday, Maggie. She's 18 today. Oh, our little Maggie. I know you're still sleeping, so enjoy your morning. <laughs> if you had a, anybody have an anniversary in the month of April? All right. Oh, Ron and Shirley, how many years? 47. Happy 47th anniversary, everybody. Happy, Happy anniversary. anniversary. Shirley, blessings. <laughs> We, get, we are grateful as we are gathering today. Know that there's a couple of inserts for Easter lilies that you need to sign up for by tomorrow. So if you want to just email JoLynn uh, last minute tomorrow, you're welcome to. Otherwise, just put one of the Easter lily forms in the offering and she'll get that for the morning. Also, you'll see in the back there are worship leaders forms. As we start to open up, we're going to start looking for people to be communion assistants and readers and greeters and ushers, so please um, sign up on that form for East, uh, for worship leaders. You'll also see that there is a second sheet for your bulletin, if you didn't pick one up. Uh, all the hymns, the first hymn is correct, I think, right? But the other two are on the insert. The names and the song lyrics are on the insert for you. So um, we were going to reprint them, and then the copier ran out of ink. Wow, it hardly ever happens, but it did, so. Jolyn wanted to share that with you so that you have that. Today, as we gather, I invite you to keep in your prayers uh, the family of Jean Fisher. Um, Jean Fisher passed away yesterday, or I think Friday. So uh, please keep uh, his family in your prayers. Funeral arrangements are pending. Jean always sat uh, right in the middle, right in front of the Franzines. So we keep uh, his family uh, in, in your prayers. Uh, also, you'll see that our midweek Lenten service this Wednesday at noon is at Katie's Cup, being hosted by Calvary. Uh, so we'll be joining there. They are also hosting a lunch afterwards catered by Ka uh, Katie's Cup. So if you're interested, you're welcome to join for that as well. But otherwise, uh, services at noon. Our Holy Week services are Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday at noon for both days, with the Good Friday service being a Swedish service. Uh, in partnership with the Scandinavian, I mean, with the uh, uh, Scandinavian Society. Uh, I'm sorry, what? Swedish Historical, Swedish Historical <laughs> Society. Yes, not just Scandinavian, it's Swedish. Uh, so please join us for that. And then Good Friday, uh, Katie's Cup is sponsoring the movie Jesus Christ Superstar, if you want to join us for that. We gather at the font, invite you to stand if you're able as we begin our time. In the name of God, who makes a way in the wilderness, walks with us, and guides us on our pilgrimage. Amen. Holy One, we confess that, that we have wandered far from you. We have, we have not trusted your promises. We have ignored your prophets in our own day. We have squandered our inheritance of grace. We have failed to recognize you in our midst. Have mercy on us. Forgive us and turn us again to you. Teach us to follow in your ways. Assure us again of your love. And help us to love our neighbor. Amen. Beloved in Christ, the word draws near to you. And all who call out to God shall be saved. In Jesus, God comes to you again and again and gathers you under the wings of love. In Jesus' name, your sins are forgiven. God journeys with you and teaches you how to live in love. Amen. Amen. Let us sing the cross of Christ and Lord.
So with you. Let us pray. Greater God, you prepare a new way in the wilderness, and your grace waters all the desert. Open our hearts to be transformed by the new things you are doing, that our lives may proclaim the extravagance of your love given to all through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for our special. Jesus. 
And our first reading is from Isaiah 43. Thus says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters, who brings out chariot and horse, army and warrior. They lie down, they cannot rise. They are extinguished, quenched like a wick. Do not remember the former things, or consider the things of old. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The wild animals will honor me, honor me, the jackals and the ostriches. For I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, to give drink to my chosen people, the people whom I formed for myself, so that they might declare my praise. Word of God. Word of God. Now we will say Psalm 126 responsive, responsively. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then were we like those who dream. Then, then was our mouth filled with laughter, and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then he said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad indeed. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the water pumps in the Negev. Those who sowed with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying their seed, will come again with joy, shouldering their sheaves. Our second reading is from Philippians 3. If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet, whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness of from God, based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death. If somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead, not that I have already attained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own, because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that we, I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. Word of God. Word of God. Please stand for the reading of today's gospel. Today's gospel is according to John, the 12th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house is filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given?
given to the poor. He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept a common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you. But you do not always have me. Gospel of our Lord. Thank you, Lord Christ. of love, of the joy of Jesus still being with them isn't strong enough. You do not always have me with you. The most comforting words I think Lazarus may have ever heard. No matter whatever happened in his life, this and his betrayal will be the rubbish that hangs around his neck until the end. We all have rubbish. We all have stuff that stinks to high heaven in our lives. Stuff that's happened to us that drive us to insanity and for some drive us to suicide. There are people who carry that burden in their lives. Lazarus is one of them. As we approach the season of Holy Week and we remember the night in which he was betrayed, we pray for those with mental health issues, whose burdens, whose rubbish that they carry stinks up their life in a manner that cannot be overcome by a hundred pounds of harm. And yet this is what we are invited to hold on to to the smell of the sweetness of the Lord's grace and mercy that's willing for Paul to let it all go. Whatever Paul carried, the good, the bad, he said in the lesson, I consider it all as rubbish. And the word is actually two Greek words that relate to throwing 
scraps or garbage to the dogs. Waste. Stuff that's not worthful and not to. For Paul, there's stuff that is worthful and not to. All of his pride. But it's refuge, Paul says. Mary and Martha had experienced the refuge of life, the rubbish of death of their brother. Lazarus was in the tombs four days when he started to sink it up, and Jesus came and wept at his funeral. When Jesus arrived, he invited them to open the tomb and tell and yell to the heavens, come out. And the bottle of that perfume was not one worth opening, you may think, as it filled their noses with the stench of death. The body of Jesus of Lazarus comes pouring out and they unwrap him. Now they're having a meal in honor and in celebration of Lazarus, but also of Jesus coming to Bethany on his way to Jerusalem. They're having a meal. Perhaps they'd already had a caterer set up for Lazarus' funeral, and so instead of wasting that food, they have a celebration. Instead of using that nard and that oil to anoint the dead body of Lazarus, somebody uses it for something else. A celebration is in the air. The smell of food, Martha's preparing again a meal, setting up a table, just as Martha served, but it doesn't say she's bitter at serving, you know. Oh, Martha, Martha, Martha. She's a great gift to community in the midst of suffering, in the midst of pain. What do people do when there isn't anything you can do for somebody who's grieving? You make them a casserole, or maybe a dessert. This is what Martha does. Such Martha's, who are not in the story emphasized, but they pour out themselves in the great smell of the baked goods and home-cooked meal. And then there's a shift to honoring, not Lazarus, though I'm sure, like a funeral lunch, they have stories to tell about Lazarus. Lazarus, you stop! You know, instead of perhaps telling stories about loved ones after they've died at a funeral, they get to tell stories about Lazarus to Lazarus while he's there. Remember when you said, yeah, it should be a little bit inconvenient for people to come to my funeral. There was a joy in those stories, but now Mary's focus changes. She's been at the feet of Jesus, and she's pouring out the oil. Twelve ounces, a container, a year's salary, very, very expensive. A commodity of great importance. The smell fills the air. On Jesus' feet, it cleanses him and prepares him for his funeral to come. Of course, there's Lazarus' allergic reaction to such generosity. Not Lazarus, but Judas. The man who carries the curse. His allergic reaction causes him to stop and say that the money should have been given to the poor since he is so concerned about the poor. And Jesus comes to his perfect going to be gone soon, he says. You're not going to have me anymore. Then he says, you'll always have the poor, which isn't to discourage generosity toward those in need. He quotes the reality that there's always giving, but perhaps this moment is going to go, and this one who is going to die is being blessed by the company of friends and prepared for his own death. Jesus said to leave her alone, but she was preparing him for something, for his funeral. And he receives this gift that's poured out for him before the faint sniff of crucifixion that will succumb to his nostrils. We too gather to pour out love and appreciation for our loved ones at funerals, but here in the midst of community, we do it before they're gone. We celebrate the gifts and the moments of our lives, like a daughter who's turned 18. Not just because she's turned 18, but she's made it to 18. So have we. There's gratitude and generosity that we are called to pour out and fill with fragrance of friendship and love with one another. We know that there have been burdens that we've all carried. There are things and refuse 
and junk in our lives that can cause us to hold on to and grab only the last few pennies of mercy for ourselves. The presence of a holy moment is here in the midst of the stench of Holy Week to come. We breathe deep in our ascending sensing the smell of mercy for us again and again and again. God's great generosity and God's presence in our lives fills us and our senses before God with mercy and grace this day and that our prayers would rise up to the Lord. Gathered together on this Lenten journey of reflection and restoration with God through Christ, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, 
Be present and guide us in your mission, in Christ's name, as Christ has done and taught us. O Lord, as you call us to your mission as your children, we pray for all those in discernment of how to be part of your ministry. We pray for your church throughout the world. We pray especially for Bishop Eaton, Bishop Clements, Pastor Thomas, for Pastor Selva Kumar and the leadership of the Sapuka Church in Tanzania. We pray for all those newly ordained and those recently installed into new leadership. We pray for all theologians, councils, committees, synods, especially the Northern Illinois Synod, and all other offices that serve your ministry, O Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Creator God, bring healing to your wounded creation. Guide us to steward your creation to your intended purpose, and guide us not to stockpile your resources for ourselves, but to distribute and share them with all the created beings. Guide us to bring an end to all food and water insecurities. Be present with everyone who has been impacted by climate change and severe weather, especially all those impacted by tornadoes, droughts, snowstorms, and earthquakes, especially in California, Madagascar, and Tanzania. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Merciful God, in this season of renewal and restoration, be present with all those who are devastated by humanitarian disasters, such as wars, pandemic, political and economic crises, especially in Afghanistan, Iraq, Syria, Israel, and Palestine. O Lord, guide world leaders in wisdom so that true peace can be recognized in all nations. We pray especially for all Ukrainian refugees, all refugees from Afghanistan, Syria, and Palestine. And we pray for all refugees and immigrants at the U.S. border. We pray for all those caught in the middle of devastation and war and all those who can't get out. O oh Lord, be present with all those who protest to accept invasion and occupation. And all who are seeking your presence, O oh Lord, among the rubble. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. In a world of pandemic and systemic racism, be present with all those on the front lines, especially all vaccine scientists, all healthcare employees, first responders, especially during this Omicron wave. We pray for all in businesses during this wave of supply shortages, especially gas stations and groceries. And we pray for all in education. We pray especially for those on the front lines dismantling racism and all other injustices and we pray for all those in grassroots movements and public office. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Holy Creator, in reminder of Trans Visibility Day, you made us and call us yours in all forms. Help bring healing to your communities that are under the fear of violence, intimidation, and erasure of their identities. We pray especially for our siblings in the, tran in the transgender communities and guide us to help celebrate all forms of gender expression, to empower and walk in solidarity toward the freedom of where we are all invited to express who you created us and invite us to be. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Creator God, we give thanks for all the blessings and good news of your eternal unconditional love for all through your son, Jesus Christ. We give thanks especially for all birthdays and anniversaries and we give thanks to everything that we name aloud or in our hearts. Thank you, God, for the gift of community, of new beginnings and opportunities to uniquely and safely gather and the life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Yeah. Here, Lord God, grant peace and love to those who are suffering in mind, body, and spirit. Bring comfort to everyone who grieves, especially for the families and friends of Jean Fisher, Dale Palmgren, of Bill Ledger, of Brian Sautel, and Bert Swain. We pray for all those who need healing, especially Jack and Marlene, Charmaine, Miriam, Diana, Frank, Yolanda, 
Phyllis, Daryl, Joanne, Vonda, and Marsha. And anyone else we name aloud or in our hearts. Be present with everyone who is dying and who will die this day. Remind all who are dying of their eternal life with you, O God. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And to your gracious hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. We gather now to celebrate Holy Communion at home. Please have your bread and wine or juice available as we gather now. I invite you, if you don't have a communion, individual communion, there are in the back on the uh, credenza in the narthex. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. The body of Christ broken for you. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup and gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me, the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. God of the welcome table, in this meal we have feasted on your goodness and have been united by your presence among us. Empower us to go forth, sustained by these gifts, so that we may share your neighborly love with all. Through Jesus Christ, the giver of abundant life. Amen. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, Father in heaven, heaven how it be your name. name. Your kingdom, kingdom come, come. Your, your will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread. Give us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing, so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit, through Jesus Christ, for whom we wait. Amen. Please stand as we sing our closing hymn, O God in Heaven.
knees serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.